we're kicking it uh, with your boy, my boy, their boy, a Saman <laughs> Savage. How you doing? Say hello to the lovely people. It's good with it, y'all. How are you all doing today? And I'm, I'm saying that to anybody who's watching this. I do care how you're doing. So DM me that answer. Please leave your response in the chat. We'll read your replies in like a week. <laughs> I had happened to put one of your boys' songs on uh, my top 10 list of the year. And I I just happened to come across it where it was like, someone had requested one song. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And then I just, either YouTube autoplayed with, you know, YouTube and all its algorithmic knowledge, or Mm -hmm. or I like saw it on the right and just decided like, oh, check this one out. And I just like was listening to it and vibing to it. It was like the the humble beginnings, right? I was like, yeah, this is just like, this is fucking, this is cool. This is fucking vibing. (laughs) So yeah, I just got into that shit randomly organically i mean it's definitely better than me uh reaching out to you like years ago even through patreon and whatnot like begging you to listen to my music <laughs> did you do that yeah yes it's 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 been years and by the way oh I, I hold no grudges i'm You're, just like i'm so sorry i'm just that's so the reason i was so in up. shock <laughs> <laughs> i was like I it did, finally happened dude i am so sorry i'm just I've been trying to get better about being like, you know, when you go from being just like a normal, you know, person who's going about your life yeah. and then like, oh, people like are paying attention to me, what I'm doing. And so you have that moment <laughs> where you're like, oh my God, people are noticing when I'm like, you know, not like on the ball about keeping up with every fucking email. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm hey, just like, take it from somebody who barely does music reviews and things like that. I consistently get DMs of like trash song after trash song. And I'm sure you've gotten your fair share. So I, as I said, I hold no grudges. <laughs> no, it, it's not even that. Like, it's not even on the, like, it's just like straight up and down. Like, I, just to, off the bat, say, like, I am really bad at like keeping like track of like my personal life. <laughs> like, like keeping track of just like shit in general. Like, I have ADHD and I'm just like fucking bad at keeping like a fucking schedule and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm like, it's going to be like, all right, I have to do all the rap critics have to do and they're like oh and people want me to like respond to them and stuff uh, <laughs> like you know and, like, oh, and, then, and it's not just on one place it's on patreon and it's on instagram and then it's on kofi and it, so i have to like yep. go between these three things and be like wait did i answer everybody over here actually what happened was somebody one of, one of my fans that dm'd me and said like yo you're on rap critics uh page and i was just like what so I I went to check it out. Not a worse lyrics list. <laughs> yeah, yo, thank God. <laughs> I, I was caught up at that point though, so I was like, I knew it couldn't have been that. But um, <laughs> I'm to go ahead and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, <beat. laughs> yeah. But not. I, I looked at the, I looked at the uh, like your most recent videos, and I'm like, I don't see my name anywhere. And I'm like, no way. It's like in this most recent video that just dropped today that says top ten <laughs> records of the year. And I'm like, no way. And I, <laughs> although I was extremely happy uh, that it was like as soon as the video started, in retrospect, I was just like, you know what? I wish I would it would have took a little longer, maybe about like like five more minutes to find out that I was in that video because that would have meant I placed higher in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but I was oh. still extremely grateful. <laughs> oh, oh, just number 10, huh? No. Not high. No, no. But no, I get you. Um, yeah. speak, so going to that song, though, uh, for, that coll- for that collab joint, uh, the thing I specifically noticed, though, like your parts were like all intersecting and overlapping with each other, which, you know, I mean, rap verses just don't do a lot these days. You know, rappers yeah. are usually like compartmentalizing the verses, right? most of the time you know that someone so is recording their shit over there and so and so is recording their shit over there you know what i mean yeah so, well, um, so fun fact we, uh, we recorded it all in the same studio but i'm an engineer and producer so i sent this beat to uh blaze of rebel the lead artist on a song a while ago and i said like look here's this little rap i got it was like the first four bars of the song but I was like, I don't like, I feel like it's dope, but I don't know. It's not my favorite thing. You can rap on it and I'll just maybe do a second verse, you know, however it comes out. So then he said uh, he just wanted to attack that, but he wanted it to be uh, me and Solus and him on the record. He said, just rap the first four bars and I'll catch up and stuff. And uh, originally it sounded even more combined. Like we were fading vocals into each other <laughs> and, and then was like, you know what? That's too much to process and post. And uh, Jay Wanda happened to be in the room 
and uh, I, I had wrote the hook, but I was like, Jay, your voice, I feel like would sound so much better on this intro part. And then uh, it was still going to be just me blazing solos on the verses. But at the end, Blaze made an executive decision to have, have Jay do the last four bars pretty much. So it, it was it, it was a crazy process. Oh, OK, so the whole like because just like the idea of like, you know, g- going back to the point of like, yeah, the r- words overlapping each other. I was thinking like, mm. OK, so who wrote what? Like, was it one person writing a whole verse and it was like, all right, we're going to split this up? Or was it like mm. I wrote four bars and then it ends on this rhyme? And I guess you can come in after that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, was it that sort of thing? You know, no, I mean, everybody wrote their own verses. Uh, the only thing that I wrote completely was the uh, the chorus. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's the only thing that I wrote that wasn't said. We're very old school when it comes to rapping. Like we don't. Um, although I make a lot of modern music, we all make a lot of modern music. We don't like anybody writing for us when it comes to our verses. The chorus is a little bit different because we're just trying to make the best song we could sure. possibly make. But yeah, for the verses, nah. I got you. So yeah, it, it, but that's the thing I was wondering though. And so like, so when it comes to the point where it's like someone says one rhyme and then like, you know how you end four bars and then like you kind of start the next bar with like a certain mm-hmm. rhyme and it's like, it, like, is that how that works? Where we're just like, okay, this is the rhyme. Now you go off of this shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, while it, like we were writing at the moment like that, like, yeah, well, while we were writing, uh, I had asked or we all would ask each other when we knew whoever's part was coming up. Which, what what uh, rhyme are you ending on so I can start writing on your rhyme? Cool. And that, that fell a little bit out of, out of place on the second verse, but then it picked back up uh, when uh, me and uh, Jay Wonder, the uh, dark-skinned, taller kid, was uh, yeah. going back and forth. The album that that is the most recent one is Duo Liddy, just, just so the people know, you know, out, out in stores or, or what have you. What inspired the concept for the uh, the album, which, you know, called Duo Liddy, but, you know, obviously a play on duality, right? Like, mm-hmm. what inspired you kind of wanting to hammer that out as a concept? Because you can kind of hear it as the, you know, especially the first couple of tracks, like, go in of like, oh, this idea of like the split personality of like this side of you and that side of you, you know? I'm very happy that you said obviously, because a lot of people ask me what did Duo Liddy meant. And there would be times where I would try to like guide them into it and be like, just say it faster, faster, faster. They'll be like, Duo Liddy, Duo Liddy, Duo Liddy. Duo Liddy. And I'm like, you, you still don't get it. Okay. A lot of different things that I saw growing up. A lot of artists have uh, alter egos, like, you know, with Nicki Minaj and Roman and uh, Digital Eminem and some shady. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they they all had alter egos, but the difference is this wasn't an alter ego for me. My whole name as a rapper is Samad Savage, and I felt like those are just two different parts of me. Each song is by uh, a different side of me or both sides of me. Some songs are from Samad, some songs are from Savage, and some songs sound like Samad songs, but they're from Savage and vice versa. Um, so... I just wanted an album where people could get to know me more because my last project before that was called uh, Trust the Weird Kids. And that was for everybody that I feel like uh, grew up, I mean, being weird, you know, and I felt like anybody who's grown up from that uh, is more proud of being weird now. And like, it's it's OK, um, but it wasn't always OK. And there's a lot of people who have battle scars from that. So that that's who that album was for the project before that. Uh, was super depressing and just about all of like my trials and tribulations not all of them but a lot of them and uh, it was for myself so this time I felt like okay I wanted to balance between that uh, something that's relatable but also uh, it's still about myself so I uh, people have feel like they have somebody to connect with the song Bloom. I really enjoyed that joint, um, especially there, there's this uh, theme or, or like specific uh, imagery that kept, that was coming up as like, you know, going from the verses into the hook where specifically the lyrics say like, we can grow if we water each other with all these and then, you know, the TV eyes. And I was like, it's like, <laughs> it was like, it was like, as I was listening to it, like, that's weirdly specific imagery. It's like, that, is that from something like, you know, <laughs> growing by watering each other with the result of our pain? Like, is that a specific, like... <laughs> Is that from like an anime or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it does sound very visual, uh, but I actually got it from the chorus. Um, when, when I had made that beat, I had sent it to Bimads, and she is an incredible artist. Uh, a lot of her stuff has like a funk influence, uh, very, for lack of better words, groovy. And I felt like I needed some of that on my project. So I try to produce to her style and figure that out. And she's the one who in the chorus says, Terry eyes, I water you when I cry. 
because we need to bloom or because you need to bloom. And um, in the background, she says, you've got to let your garden grow. And I like I'm the kind of guy that just likes to always make sure the end of my verse goes into the hook really well. Yeah, it, I that's, noticed that's that, the difference yeah. between a song and yeah. <laughs> no, it's I just such a pro. cool, sat- it's such a satisfying thing to hear to be like, oh, yeah. and this goes into it instead of like a lot of times rappers will like rap over like the part of you know the hook because they're trying to like just say what their part is and get their point out, and it's just like, yeah. oh, but now I can't enjoy like the song. Yeah, I can't part stand that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't stand that, yo. <laughs> Especially when they're like talking throughout the entire hook. Like, I don't mind ad libs, but like, uh, like when they're like, yo, real shit, this is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, female singer in the background. And it's yeah. like, yeah, baby, this is the world. Like, this <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy, you know, coming at you. I'm yeah. trying to tell you what it is. Not what it was. It's like, I'm trying to enjoy the hook, dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, I hate that as almost as much as I hate a rapper starting off with, you know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> you not already like, know what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, this is my first time hearing a song. First time the world has heard of you. The phrase that I hear you say, school with it. And I was like, listen oh, to me. I was yeah. like, wait, does that mean? Like, I, it's one of those things where like, you kind of get the context as you hear someone talking about saying something and then you're like, wait, I don't, that's not in my slang uh, uh, dictionary. Wait, what, that, what, what does that mean? <laughs> so, uh, truth be told, it's, it's from two things, two different things, and I've turned it into something. There's this rapper that I used to work with, Tennis Boy Will, really dope dude, does a kind of, I don't want to limit him to saying he just does SoundCloud rap, but that's sure. the style, you know? He used to start off his songs or at the end of his songs or randomly just say, Skill with the muck. Muck is weed. I don't smoke, but I love the way that he says good with the and like doesn't doesn't say what's good. He just says good. And I was like, I like the way that sounds. So I, I you know, took that and tur- turned it into good with it. And the meaning behind it is just asking what's good with it. That was the thing I was thinking, like, as you were saying it, like, just like now earlier, I was like, it's good with it. Like, my brain went like, oh, yeah, that's what that means. And then I was like, wait, wait, is that what that means, though? (laughs) You know, like, you have the extra moment. (laughs) You you did it yourself, but anybody who reads the word or is hearing it for the first time usually pronounces it as scood with it. And it's just like, (laughs) no, it's just two O's there because it's like scud, like... (laughs) Yeah, you, you can't put like a yeah. U there. You kind of have to put the two O's because that's what it, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's supposed to encourage all of my, um, you know, like-minded people uh, to continue to ask what's good with it, like asking, asking your friends and stuff what's good with their lives, how they're doing and stuff. Mm. And if everything is good, the response to that would be, it's good. And yeah, it's something that I started. Uh, I, I often hear it around where I'm from, New Jersey. Uh, but I, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm, I'm famous. If it catches on more, it catches on more. <laughs> right, if it comes the new Izzle, you know, it is what it is. It is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. If it becomes um, the new, pipe it up. <laughs> yes. Nobody yes. said pipe it up before us. <laughs> Write that shit down before me goes. Nobody was saying pipe it up. <laughs> so you got hit the shit off at the pass. Yep. <laughs> Should have trademarked it. <laughs> uh, for that freestyle track. Okay. So first of all, that was just fucking hilarious. Just without ending. If y'all don't, if y'all haven't heard it, go listen to that one. But um. <laughs> Was the, like, did you actually have a rhyme that was next after that, or were you legit just like freestyling like, and they were just like, oh shit, I fucked up? <laughs> uh, for uh, watch your mouth freestyle, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, a, an exclusive for, for, oh. you, for you all. <laughs> when I heard that beat, I had a lot of frustration towards a specific person, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get all that frustration out on this one track. Uh. And once I got to a point where I realized how much, I mean, I always, I felt better than that person already. It's another rapper. But when I got to a point where I'm just like, okay, this is becoming overkill and I'm having like way too much fun. That's when I was like, you know what? It's time for me to stop. And I was like, how do I end this? Because I kind of just wrote to the end of the beat <laughs> and was just like, you know what? I stopped recording for a second and just said, let me just act like I'm going to say a bar and just not say it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I was I was just lazy. <laughs> Couldn't think Look of a better ending. Exposed. <laughs> yeah. RC exposed. I got no. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely my fade to black. <laughs> no, no. But it, it definitely works. Just like in that moment of just like as you're listening to it for the first time, you just have that pop of like you know you realizing what you just said and like making yourself laugh. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> 
<laughs> and the funny thing is the the uh, interlude at the end of it. I didn't. I recorded that like last. Uh, as far as the process of recording my album and said, I want to interlude on this album. I don't know where I'm going to put it. And I felt like it matched being there because it felt like, okay, I ended it, but there could be more to say here because I act like I messed up anyhow. Going on to another track uh, at the end of uh, the track reciprocate, the, the more, mm. you know, uh, the heartbreak joint, you know, the, the one for, you know what I'm saying? For the radio, you know, to, 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 to yeah. pay, pay, you know? Uh, but there's a part at the end where there's a bunch of voices that sing intergalactic takeoff. And I was yes. like, wait, was that related to what happened in the song? What was going on there? <laughs> okay. So that was like maybe the first time I said, fuck it. And just did whatever <laughs> felt right. Cause that song was entirely a freestyle. And ironically, uh. watch your mouth and reciprocate was recorded in the same night. <laughs> uh. and so, yeah. So I was just in the vibe of just like, I'm just going to do whatever feels right. Instead of just like focusing on trying to make the greatest shit ever. And when I first heard the beat, all I heard was goodbye world, welcome to my world, taking your skywards. And Mm. I was like, hmm, if I'm taking somebody out of this world, what would be the next thing said? And at the time I just learned how to use my talk box, which is on uh, the uh, 80s record on there, She Wants It All. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to do something (laughs) with my talk box here. And then that's when I did that. And yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> uh, okay, Got, uh, just, just aside, that, that was a fun ass fucking uh, track at the end there. I I, I think I actually mm. said like, man, I wish that part at the end went on longer with the talk box and you know yeah. the fucking zap, uh, you know, influence sort of thing going mm-hmm. on. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> like yep, let's go. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm strapped <laughs> in, you know. Like in the background, there's like vocals that slowly fade in and go like to space take off or something like that. So I was like, yeah. oh, is it kind of it? But then this one went into like the super serious song and. I was like, okay, well, maybe it's not. <laughs> God, it's not like we were about to go somewhere, but then, like, the spaceship, like, you know, crash landed. And like, well, anyway, all right, yeah. It, it, came, it honestly came from me being hype about the beat. Uh, uh, once I made that beat, and I was like, yo, this is so incredible. It feels like it's otherworldly. And that, like, I guess child in me was just like, do whatever feels right. And sure. then I was like, okay, now it's time to actually make a song. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the elements kind of stay there. Because, like, well, I don't know. It's not good. I don't want to, you know, make that yeah. just not exist so no one can hear that anymore. <laughs> yep. Yep, precisely. I get you on that. And, oh, my God, the fucking hook on this shit. The, it, it ain't safe to drink our own water. The, you know, when oh, yeah. someone just says a certain lyric, you're just like, oh, God damn, this really is the state of things right now, right? Because it's like... Mm. I have been on that shit, right? Where it's just like, all I'm doing is buying water bottles because it's just kind of understood that you kind of can't just drink like the water out of the taps, yeah. like, you know, for extended periods of time because it's just kind of accepted that the water's been kind of like poisoned by, you know, the lead pipes not being replaced because mm-hmm. uh, our government is lazy. Yep. You know, it's like, it's like oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but then like, just the, <laughs> but how it gets revealed in just such a simple lyric, like, yeah, it's just, it's just not safe to drink our own water. It's like, that sucks. That shouldn't happen. That's like a third world country thing like wait the fuck yeah. wait a minute and it could have been a more environmental song uh th- the reason i even said that was because uh two years ago i did this thing where i told my fans i'll i'll use my own money to rent whatever uh whatever uh u-haul and uh is uh and let all of them fundraise and they can donate as much as they want to and everything will go to buying water bottles for uh for Nork. Because uh, there was one point, and I'm not sure, I don't want to say it's fixed, it's definitely not fixed, right? But there was one point that Nork's water was worse than Flint, Michigan's. Through that, I met uh, National Clean Water. Uh, it's a nonprofit that helped a lot in um, Flint, Michigan. And when Nork was having their crisis too, they helped a lot there too. So um, 50% of the proceeds of that song goes to National Clean Water. That song was originally supposed to have uh, Raekwon on there. So much has happened in, in the pandemic and whatnot. And I, I know, uh, you know, God bless him. He, he just lost his mom and stuff. So there was just a lot of different things that was happening that just made that not happen. So then um, it was supposed to be uh, Race the Five Nine on it. Um, but there was like no guarantee with that. What, what happened was uh, I got tight with Denon, uh, Denon Porter. Uh, Ex member of uh, D12. D12. Okay, uh, so that's what, because I kept seeing Denon and I was like, is that? Is that <laughs> he was ringing is bells. That the I'm thinking about, yeah, yeah. we're just like, 
I mean, there are other people named to die, but I yeah. like to die. <laughs> yeah, le- legendary, legendary MC and producer. Yeah. And uh, I had asked him if he could, if he thought he could pull that off for me, and he he really he really did try. But what happened was, um, it was a conflict in scheduling because uh, Royce had the um, what is it called, the uh, tiny desk thing, and pretty much all of his focus went into that and building his new studio. So it just didn't happen uh, time and time again of maybe it could happen, maybe it could happen. Nah, it's not going to happen. Maybe it could happen. And then, uh, so yeah, so the verse was empty and I was just like, look, there's nobody who can give what I need right now other than Danon himself. And he knocked it out of the park. One of my favorite verses on, on the record. And he just... Man, he he gave it that love and care, you know. It wasn't just like a verse that was sent in; like he cared about that. Yeah, and, and, and if you would have told me that 50%. was one of the Wild Boys from D twelve, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> fucking believe you. Oh, uh, yo, definitely, definitely dig into his music because he's he has completely changed from what you know he was doing at the time. He's his music sounds so great. A, a song I would recommend is a uh, Wakanda Man. <laughs> he, it, it's 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 an incredible record like oh my gosh he's amazing amazing person um and and even more amazing so that he let i mean he hopped on a song that he knew 50 percent of the proceeds was going to go to that and not only that he didn't even um he moves off of the art like he's so successful this man produced pimp so he's still getting royalty checks right, out yeah. the wazoo. <laughs> Holy shit, <man. laughs> and he's and he just doesn't care he does whatever is like whatever artistically fits him oh yeah there was a lyric that i think was mis uh miswritten on the genius website oh, yeah. yeah yeah man yeah and you brought it up and i i just wanted to make that you know put, put that on the record like hey genius change that shit where he said uh yep black panther tulsa and rosewood and they said something else was like Rolls Royce or something like that. I was like, come on, man. Let's stop. Yeah, like, why would I just say Rolls Royce out of nowhere? <laughs> In the middle of a song about, like, poverty <laughs> and the environment yeah. and the the black plot. Uh, like, <laughs> just Don't Rolls Royce, though. Rolls Royce. <laughs> I guess, yeah, they thought oh. you were, like, young Jeezy. My president is black, but my Lambo's blue, though, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, love the review of that song, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the OG rap critic. Oh, my God. <laughs> That, I remember the, with that review, it is one of those things, like, I remember at that time I listened to that song, and of course, like, mm-hmm. Nas is in it, so it's like, oh, this is, of course, the song I have to take seriously now, but then it's like, mm-hmm. as you keep listening to it, it, it's one of the first, I think that was the first one I actually was inspired to write the Rap Critic episode for, because I remember I was talking <laughs> with friends and being like, you know, I want to give a rapper credit for, like, doing outside of the, what they normally do, you know, Jeezy's, he was just a, you know, trap dude, but he's, you know, trying to do yeah. something different, thing. but it's just like, I don't think this is working, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. You, you definitely changed, like, how I listen to music. Like, I can't, I can't even enjoy things sometimes because I'm like, oh, no. wait, I will pause and be like, that made no sense. And this song is forever ruined now. I ruined it now. <laughs> I hope you can't sleep and then you dream about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's funny. <laughs> but, I mean, that basically just started for me just like, you know, just thinking of just like, you know, I would listen to songs and then just talk to someone and be like, hey, man, did you hear that part? That was kind of weird. They're like, man, I'll be listening to what they're saying. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm not crazy. That was weird. <laughs> like, you know. Started the show based off the idea of like, I, you guys hear this right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, going back to it, I was just thinking about the lyric where you said, um, you know, Black Panther, Tulsa, Rosewood. So many times we've been impeded. Now we got technology, and Black Wall Street can be completed. You know, we can mm-hmm. plant seeds that become trees, and we deceive even if we don't see it. And it was I was having that moment where we're just like. You know, yeah, and I've had this song before. We're just like, you know, we look back at history. It's like, man, there's so many things where we're just like certain white folks, you know, not all of them, of course, but uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> certain <laughs> folks that are keeping things from progressing. Those specific warring people were a little mm-hmm. specifically up in arms. And like, yeah, shit like the Tulsa and race and all that shit that was just like allowed to happen. And like we as a collective consciousness as a country feel, feels like, you know, we didn't fucking, you know, 
acknowledge that that was a thing that has happened or even like you know that we were teaching it as a thing that happened until what the Watchmen series came out like three years ago mm-hmm. you know what I mean and it's such a crazy thing and like it, where you it's saw still not really taught enough yeah like, why isn't there a movie about that that would be an incredible film it's just like oh wow this whole thing started like there was like black business and it was just going well until like you know some motherfucker got mad uh, that uh, they just interpreted that someone was whistling their word and was like oh and that's the whole reason why we should bomb everything here you know it's like yep. that is an insane fucking story yeah <laughs> you know? um, yep it is and, and oh yeah I had found out uh, in my own fucking hometown Wilmington North Carolina uh, in 1898 mm. there was an election uh, where yeah it was just like oh uh, you know a bunch of like Democrats were winning and it was like black and white people you know working together on the Democratic side to like you know and they worked together and they got the votes and they won and then a bunch of angry ass uh, racist white uh, you know barbers and clergymen and all that sort of shit just ran the black people out of town anyway and uh, there's oh, gonna wow. be no retribution for that that's just over now and oh we, by the way we're gonna name a fucking park after one of the assholes that was responsible for it you know yep. it's like holy shit Hewitt Cray Park if you, anyone's from Wilmington North Carolina they fucking know <laughs> uh, you know I actually I, I would like uh, I, I would like y'all take on this um I found out, I mean, somebody had had said something recently where they said, uh, you know, there's a bunch of uh, statues of of, of Uh, Confederate mm. soldiers and stuff like that. And most people, I would say most even sensible people would say, like, we need to, you know, take those down. They shouldn't be considered our heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But someone said we shouldn't get rid of the history that's like, that uh that that shows where we're at today like this uh, is america this happened in america it's part of the history and i'm not i, I don't know i'm kind of neutral now mm-hmm. but i just I, I i recently heard about that on tiktok and was just like you know i never really thought about it that way like if we mm. we we could possibly erase it completely because it's not even talked about in the history books you G- know? G- are you thinking in that terms of like you know how warner brothers like now they present their, you know, Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes cartoons and they have the, you know, they With don't. that disclaimer. Yeah, because like back in the day mm-hmm. they used to just erase the parts that were racist and it would be like, I didn't even know Bugs Bunny was like racist and shit, you know, but now yeah. they have the DVDs like, hey guys, we admit this was insensitive, but we're not going to act like it wasn't there so that you can, like, I, I guess I can see, like, yeah. I remember someone bringing the point, it's like, don't take those statues down, put up more statues of what black people, like, you know, black people's stories and stuff like that to like mm-hmm. outnumber it and be like, yeah, sure, that was was there but like by that being there by itself that is erasing the reality of black people's like things so let's have yeah. all of these you know things resurrected to to truly basically shame the bullshittery of what happened here <laughs> yep i mean all of the education is given from the parents like i've had full-blown conversations with confederate flag trump supporting like super duper racist uh children mm. like uh i had this long conversation with this 14 year old who was a fan of my music and i'm like I don't feel like you can be a fan of my music <laughs> hey, <you're> and, not <laughs> yeah, and not be a fan of me as, as you know, an existing you listen to system of a down to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I, of course I hit him with the, Oh, okay. Who's your top five rappers? I knew he was going to have him in him in there, but it's impossible sure. to have a top five without black people. So right. <laughs> obviously there's some black people there. I'm like, Oh, who's your favorite basketball players? None of them were white. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can't stop lying. <laughs> yeah. So he, I'm, I'm like, yo, do you like, you want to get rid of the existence of black people, not realizing we're part of all of your favorite things? Right. And not only that, at the end of the conversation, come to realize the reason he uh, uh, inherited the hatred of black people from his father was because his girl had recently left him for a black guy. Wow, and so your the, his emotions just kind of like wrapped yep. it on to yeah. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. It, it's fascinating how the first. But he was fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> the first. That's ridiculous. Was political, you know what I'm saying? But you know, like yeah, we do kind of like know all about you know that shit now. Like I feel like the average black person I talk to like does got oh yeah like Tulsa that shit happened like you know I feel like mm. that w- is not a reality like twenty years ago. And so like as you said that I did kind of have that feeling of like hey so can we like do over can we do do over black wall street like <laughs> just to, like we have all the knowledge and technology of things now like okay let's just can we try it again or mm-hmm. that's just not a possibility and, <laughs> i don't know like i i legit don't know i'm asking to be like i'm legit putting this out here i'm, I'm being fucking socrates right now it's like yeah could this be a possibility are we too far longer you know, where, where are we standing on the, the you know web du bois versus uh 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 Oh my God! Who the fuck was his rival? You know, uh, you know Booker T. Washington. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, where do we 
said between these two right now. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think it can happen. I think there will definitely be uh, opposition um, of that. Sure. But uh, I do know that about like five years ago, there was an app that was developed called Black Wall Street where they only had black products on there, like mm. of everything. Uh, uh, so, so if you wanted to buy black... black huh? Yeah. yeah, if you wanted to buy black, you absolutely could. Uh, I think that was a good idea and a good start, but I think that actual Black Wall Street would have to mean more uh, because we would have to invest in the companies, mm. you know, in, in like little investments. Like we don't have to um, like, you know, blow all of our hard earned money, especially when we're not even uh, buying stocks in Apple, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if we did come together and, and, and circulate our, our, our dollars, I think we could be a lot more successful, you know? And I think that every uh, community should do that. Uh, the only difference is that uh, the other companies are, are doing, I mean, other, uh, other communities yeah. are doing that. Irish people support Irish people. Sure. Jewish people support I, Jewish I, people. I, I think it's just like black people are so specifically fragmented by nature of how our like shit happened that it's kind of hard to like now inorganically try to push those elements together to which like, mm. you know, other, yeah, like sure, like Polish communities and this, that, and the third is like, oh yeah, they're already like in set in this place and they've just kind of been yeah. put here. As we didn't to, like, have that head start, yeah. I was listening to some of your stuff on uh, YouTube, you know, just listening through shit. Uh, I think it was uh, the Victory Lab Freestyle. And there was one more mm. where you said, like, yeah, you literally just said, like, uh, even though I, I was just winging this shit. In fact, most of my album was a freestyle. And I like I had to pause and be like, wait, is that true? <laughs> like, <laughs> you're bullshitting. <laughs> like, is that so true? So to give context, um, uh, it, it was, it was uh, most of my album was Organized Freestyle. Wow. So Organized Freestyle is when you hit record and say about two to four bars and mm -hmm. stop. Hit record, say two to four bars and stop. It's different from just being like, hit record and then freestyle the entire verse. There's no way I'd be able to uh -huh. <laughs> tie the verses into the hooks. I, I, got, <laughs> like you I, I got you though. I got you yeah, you, yeah. you made it work in, that, in a specific type of way. I got you. Yeah, but not, honestly for this next project I'm doing, uh, I'm not gonna speak too much on it because we're still in the dual lady cycle, but uh, mm. I'm, I, I just started writing again the other day and I, 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 I could definitely say it's, it's some of my best uh, lyrical work thus far. I think writing definitely has an advantage to it. Nice. No matter how much I love Jay-Z. <laughs> no it's true though because like you know being able to take the time and really like map out and be like wait do i want to actually map out how i feel about this in a way that really gets people to understand it you know and mm -hmm. in a way that like sometimes in the moment it definitely it is like valuable to like feel the energy of someone like coming up with it in the moment like that definitely has value to it too but you know yeah. I, it, just being able to take time to think like if you're already smart on your toes you go and be seven times smarter when you take the extra you know what i mean like yeah yeah, yeah. you know because i I, I'm not gonna lie. Like I, the reason I took that approach is because of Jay Z. Mm. Uh, knowing that he literally just goes in the studio and just freestyles, it's like 16 bars. Sure. But um, the more I, I dug into that, I found out what he does is he hears the beat and then writes the verse in his head. So yeah. it is technically freestyling, but it's just like no, you just no one's heard it. Practice yet. your memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the only way he got to that, like he uh, also did this interview. I, I love this is the reason why I love TikTok because you get like the most randomest information. It was a random interview that he did that I saw years ago, but didn't really take this part into consideration. He said a lot of people want to uh, be as successful as you, but they don't know all that you did to get there. And I've always applied that to just money because when I think Jay Z, I think business. So I'm like, oh, so I just have to keep grinding and tie this into that and all my rights and LOCs and masters and all of that. But I never really thought about that from a skill set point. And that's what inspired me now to just write. I'm going to try to write for a couple of years straight and then go back to freestyling and see how much better it, it, it could work because I have the practice there. I, I, I have the foundation, you know. I appreciate you coming through to uh, chat chat with uh, chat with uh, the crew. <laughs> it can, may I ask uh, two questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. How do you keep going? Like, what motivates you to keep going uh, on YouTube and keep reviewing these things? Because I know that there's always a, a rise and decline in views and some things become more popular than others. You can't really predict it and stuff. How do you uh, f 
fight that? Because I experience that as an artist sometimes too with songs. Uh, man, that is a <laughs> that was quite the question. I, I thought it was just gonna be how do you keep doing this? <laughs> like I thought you were just gonna be saying that. How do you keep doing this? <laughs> just, it would have been funny if the question was why do you keep you doing this? Say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, really, honestly, what inspires me is legit just being like having something to say about something. Like right now, I'm working on um next episode for a Dead Prez uh, hip hop. Um, oh, that's gonna be sick. Nice, right? It's also like, oh shit! It's time to put on that, you know, put on my get my knife and fork, you know. I think it's time yeah. to dig into this music, you know. Um, I love when you review like the like songs that are like obviously in the top one hundred best hip hop songs of all time. Sure, because it's like you know you're gonna get shit no matter what you do. <laughs> but but, it's but about, I appreciate you know, it. It's about tackling it, you know, like yeah. <laughs> and also just in general, like straight up the uh, the way I'll be feeling is that like you know yeah I'll listen to the song and be like I want to say something about this lyric. I like I mm. am naturally like. I mean, I definitely have like, you know, takes time to be like, okay, well, how do I want to structure it exactly? And I don't, don't just want to say it, write down anything. So I got to figure out how to say it and, you know, say it in a way that's going to be funny and actually like make you want to care about what I'm saying, you know? And also just in a way yeah. that's not just repeating what you could have already heard someone else, like bringing a different flavor to it in a specific way or, or commenting about something that I'll feel like, man, it feels like nobody's talking about this. Like, so why don't I just say, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, that's straight up where the inspiration comes from. Like it, you know, it, it starts off a little slow at first because I'm just like being like, okay, well, this is going to be the definitive episode that I make about this. And you can't go back to these. So yeah, this is going to mm. be the thing that I say about. So like, once you get over that, then it's having that moment of like, but I want to talk about this. And this part is interesting. And I want to say something about that. You know, like uh. it's just having the, the genuine inspiration from like listening to the song. I mean, you know, in, engaging with the music and being like, oh man, but this keeps scratching my brain. I want other people to think about this too. And you know what I mean? It like, uh. it's the, the genuine exploration of, you know. It's, it's your love for it. Yeah, yeah. Just wanting to dig into something and be like, oh man. And, and to get someone else to really like, ah, do you get why this is cool? You get it, right? Like, it, it, yeah. you get what I said that part? Like, you get why this is cool, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, see, that that I, that I respect, man. Because a, a lot of people who get in your position and have somewhat of a successful uh, uh, channel just end up, you know, chasing the high of, of, of going viral. You know oh, what I'm saying? Sure. But you, your heart is in it. And that's just, that's what separates you, man. That's why I'm a fan of your work. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> <laughs>